it's Ben Wise of Zor Fitness, and this is the name game. Workout number 21 is Butterfinger. Every two and a half minutes until failure, five hand clean jerked at 135, 95, 50 double unders, and then box step ups, 10 in round one, 12, or sorry, 10, 14 in round two, 18 in round three, and then we'll go 22, 26, etc. Um, so your score on this is the total number of reps that you complete until you get time capped. So movement standards for the hang clean and jerk, you have to have straight arms. You can't have any bend in them and the hang. Then you have to actually go to the front rack, otherwise it's a snatch, and then you can go up overhead and you have to lock out and be stacked overhead. The double under, pretty simple. The rope's got to go under your feet twice, and the step up you must alternate. So you can't just do all of them on your right leg. <laughs> I don't know why you do that, but um, yeah, you can't do that. You have to alternate legs and then you have to fully extend your hips at the top, no different than a box jump. Um, so the workout flow, um, you're gonna be resting until you actually start the next interval. So you can't work ahead on this one. Um, you have to rest. Uh, so it'll be like you'll do five, 50, 10 step ups. And then at 2.30, you'll do five, 50, 14 step ups and follow that rep scheme. So equipment setup, I would recommend making what I'm gonna to refer to now as like the triangle, um, because I've said this a bunch of times, whereas the 20.2, 20, 20 which was um, dumbbell thrusters, toast to bar, double unders, or the 20.5 um, with the uh, ring muscle up, wall ball, row cows, where you're basically moving all these little short transitions in this triangle type format. It's the same thing that we did in deviled eggs where people were actually doing the bar muscle up as well. And the same thing that we did for Fibonacci spiral. So we've been doing this a lot. I'm gonna to refer to it now as the triangle. I just made that up. But um, yeah, it's that nice simple thing where everything is just a, a few steps away and it's just this tight setup. I did not demo that in my athlete demo, by the way, um, just for filming purposes, but I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, so I called this workout Butterfinger because it is grippy. Uh, so every single one of these is involving like a shoulder and you're having to actually hold onto an implant every single one. So um, yeah, I mean really, especially anytime a, a movement's coming from the hang, it tends to get more grippy because you're incentivized to not drop it and reset every time. Because I mean, certainly you could do all singles on the barbell, but then you have to drop and deadlift it every single time up to the hip before you descend into your hangs uh, clean. So yeah, you're always incentivized to hold onto it in a hang. And then double unders is obviously grip, especially if people get extended where they're kind of doing this and they have a lot of uh, shoulder and upper back um, tightness and they, they kind of death grip the handles like this instead of pinching it nice and lightly in your hands. Anything that you can do to get yourself a little bit more endurance in your grip is gonna be super helpful. Um, so obviously like when you're doing your jerks, try to like actually relax your hand as you're pressing up overhead. Um, and then you obviously you'll, you'll reclaim the hook and, and like go again, but don't do like that bounce kip off your thighs where you're, it's really taxing your grip and it like wants to slip out of your hands. And that's something that's certainly happened. Like if you're in rounds three, if you get to four, um, your grip is going to be potentially gone. Um, I didn't realize how bad mine actually was cause I was breathing really hard and kind of metabolically messed up after the workout. But like 15 minutes later after like my lungs and stuff were kind of recovered, um, my forearms were just pumped out. I didn't even realize it until afterwards. Um, so it was like shoulders, grip, and then breathing was the, the next thing. And that's, I'm speaking for myself personally there. So really the, the, the hang, power clean and jerk, um, the double unders, like it's, it's pretty straightforward um, as to like, you either can do those movements well, like we've had plenty of exposure to them, it shouldn't be an issue unless you just don't have double unders yet. Um, it's really the box step ups that a lot of people haven't been exposed to much. And um, for, especially for shorter athletes who like your, your hip crease is gonna be well below your knee, like when you're doing that step up, just because you're a shorter athlete. Um, typically for a lot of squatting movements, you might find that that's pretty easy for you, but these are gonna be super challenging just because you have to start from so low. Um, I personally just don't like these at all. Like they're, they're very challenging for me. So. I kind of like swing a little bit, which again, it's not great for the grip. Like if you can stay, keep your arms completely relaxed and long and just power your way up where you're staying pretty vertical and moving a lot of that actions up and down, um, that's gonna be the most efficient way to do it in terms of both like for your legs, but also for like your grip. 
Um, and that's just going to be least taxing. But frankly, I can't do it that way. Um, like I might be able to do it, but it just it would require so much leg strength and drive out of the bottom of the hole that that's super awkward. Um, so, but if you can do that, especially if you're someone who's a little bit taller, you can take advantage of that where you're, you're maybe at parallel or even maybe slightly above at a 24 inch or 20 inch box. Um, that is totally the way to go if you can stay upright and continue to pick up that cycle speed relatively quickly. So for people, like definitely you're, there's going to be people that get really tired and that's just going to prevent them and slow them down. Their cycle speed is going to cap them in this workout where they're not going to be able to hold on to the dumbbells and not drop them. And that will be the time cap, the, the thing that caps them in this workout. But there'll be another set of people who are fit enough and it's literally going to come down to cycle speed. Like how quickly can you get through the bar, the rope, and back to the, the box where you can get, again, vertical really quick, move them through all of those reps because, um, yeah, for people who are really high level, it's, that's what it's going to come down to more so than, um, yeah, like your, you know, ultimate like failure of the movement. Like that's not going to happen. It's just going to come down to cycle speed. So, um, yeah. I would I'll play around with cheating out that those different ways to do it whether you're kind of swinging kind of generating a little bit of momentum in the step up or if you're more of a strict person strict person <laughs> like being strict in the way that you go about stepping up um, and that's really going to be yeah the base determinant of what your success is in this workout so um, yeah warm ups are in the comments below. And if you're someone who has not signed up for the protocol yet, you can get a seven day free trial by heading over to zorfitness.com slash pro. Best of luck on Butterfinger.